Here we're going to do two examples um, where we're going to specifically solve these by eliminating the fractions. So remember from our previous video, we discovered that if we find the least common denominator of the all the fractions involved and multiply both sides of the equation by that least common denominator, that will make all denominators go away and thereby all fractions will go away. So for this first example, we need to first identify our least common denominator. Right? So what is the smallest number that both 5 and 4 go into evenly? Well, of course, that would be 20. So that tells me I'm going to take 20 times 1 fifth x plus 1 fourth x and of course put those in parentheses because 20 has got to multiply to both of them and then on the right side we also have to multiply 20 by 3. Alright so we go ahead and distribute our 20 through so we have 20 over 1 times 1 fifth x plus 20 over 1 times 1 fourth x equals 20 times 3 is 60. And so just like we know should happen, we can cancel and get 4 when we take 20 over 5. Then 20 divided by 4 is 5, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And so what we have now is 4x plus 5x equals 60. So no more fractions. 4x plus 5x is 9x equals 60. Of course, we want to divide both sides by 9. Uh, but we also want to make sure we have a reduced fraction. And 3 goes into both. 60 and 9. So our solution here is x equals 20 over 3. All right. In this example, we have something kind of tricky happening. I have an x, right? So first, let's just look at the two numbers uh, when we're looking at our least common denominator. According to our two numbers, 4 and 3, that would make an least common denominator of 12, right? But we have this x in here. So let's think about what the purpose this least common denominator is going to serve will be. It's going to be to eliminate all the denominators. So in order for this x to cancel out, this least common denominator needs to also have an x factor in it. So our least common denominator here is 12x. Okay. Um, another way to understand why it is that we often multiply by x is suppose you were trying to find the least common denominator of 1 fourth, 1 fifth, and 1 third. So I'm kind of letting this 5 take the place of my x. Well, since 4, 5, and 3 have nothing in common, you understand that you would just multiply all of those together. Right? If the factors have nothing in common, you just multiply them all together to get your least common denominator. So 4 times 3 times 5. So that's essentially what we're doing here. 12 is 4 times 3 and then times x. Okay, So that's our least common denominator. So I will multiply by 12x on both sides. On the left side, I can immediately do my reducing. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. I need to distribute on the right side before I do any reducing. So on the left, I have 3x. On the right, I have uh, and remember, you can always think of this as 12x over 1, so this is really 12x over x. I'm just going ahead and combining these fractions since there's just 1s on top anyway. I know that's slightly different than what I showed here, but um, you can show it either way. 12x over 3. 
Okay, so now we can do some more reducing. So here my x's cancel, and that's really important because we don't want any x's hanging around in the denominator of a fraction. And here 12 divided by 3 is 4, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So when this whole thing cleans up, I have an equation with no fractions at all. 3x equals 12 plus 4x. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides. And so we end up with negative x equals 12. Okay, so if I have negative x equals 12, you know, what does negative x really mean? Well, it means negative 1 times x equals 12. And so, of course, I can divide both sides by negative 1. So x equals negative 12.